It was a year ago at this time that Chuck Pagano left his position as Ravens defensive coordinator to become the head coach of the Colts. What followed was a season unlike anything that Pagano or his family could ever have imagined. Now, for the first time, the coach's wife, Tina, and their three daughters share their thoughts and emotions in their own words. Every daughter will tell you their dad gives the best hugs. My name is Tori Pagano. I shared my father's embrace with my sisters and mother over the years, equally and willingly. We share them with more people now and marvel as everyone recognizes what we knew all along. Dad was named head coach of the Indianapolis Colts in January of last year. To see someone you love make it to the top of his profession and, you know, achieve that goal was really special. He worked as hard as ever in his new job, so being tired seemed reasonable. The bruises developing on his body did not. You know, I was tired, I was fatigued, but I just chalked that up to football. I started noticing, uh, you know, some bruises. We all saw them. I mean, I think we just kind of pushed it aside. We really thought it wasn't anything serious because what, you know, how could anything like that ever happen to, you know, your dad? The last ones that he got were so, they were like just mirror images of each other in a spot that you would never get a bruise and it was just a real red flag. You really have to have that checked out. You really, you know, talk to somebody and get some blood work. And, and he wouldn't have done it had it not been the bye week. It's, it's horrible to have to tell someone a diagnosis of leukemia, what, no matter what kind of leukemia it is. You know, it's like getting hit across the head with a baseball bat. It was an emergent situation. Like, Dr. Kripe said, you can't leave. You don't understand, you can't leave. You could bleed to death. My mom called me, and she started off the conversation with, don't worry, everything's gonna be okay. He called me, he said I'm in the hospital. Then she gave the phone to my dad and let him, you know, explain what was going on. And You can hardly get it out of, out of your mouth. And, uh, and not so much what I was going to have to go through and deal with. I just didn't want them to worry. Then he said, I have leukemia. And it was, I mean, it was really scary news to hear, but... You feel helpless. You feel powerless because you can't do a thing about it. And then I just kind of cried and said, I wish I was there to give you a hug. We all think we're invincible, and you just never, never really uh, think it's going to happen to you. When he was well enough to leave the hospital, he told the world, and he would do it like a football coach. In my vision that I'm living, see two more daughters get married, dance at their weddings, and then hoist that Lombardi several times. It was a beautiful speech. It's amazing the things that he's been so inspired by his journey and how he can transcend that. It's Corey, right? Yeah. How are you? I had gotten uh, a letter uh, during the, the first uh, you know month of this uh, in the hospital from from Corey Lane. I shaved my head for you. You know, Mickey shaves her head like the cheerleaders did. And to see the smile. And then uh, you look at a guy like a uh, young man like Corey Lane. You know, and he grabs you. And he's like the one, he's, you can beat this. <laughs> Amazingly, he returned to the sidelines to finish the season, even the playoffs. There was tons of support for my dad. Players, coaches, cheerleaders, the community, everybody. It's amazing that it, it actually has happened and it's in its real life and um, and the ending is, is great, you know. He returns to the Simon Cancer Center where our family will commit a lifetime of support. It's really special the people that are in that community supporting my dad. My sister and I will give thought to those weddings one day while my dad works on that Lombardi trophy. In the meantime, a lot of good is happening for a lot of people. And that is what gives this whole journey a wonderful ending.
huge thanks to the Pagano family for allowing us the access and for them to tell that very, their very personal story. You guys, I talked to Bruce Arians, who's here in town, and he was the interim head coach, and he said that you know, the thing that was really important for their football team is to make sure that it was the players and practice and everything. He was able to see it on the iPad. They were texting back and forth and to, to make that a big part of this whole recovery for him. And his goal was December 30th, he wanted to return. And that's really what it gave him a lot of fight to get back there. And it's just a great story. Uh, Chuck Pagano has left his imprint on this Baltimore Raven defense. Remember, he coached Ed Reed and Ray Lewis in college and was a defensive coordinator a year ago. So he knows his defense. When you talk about the Baltimore Ravens being here, they're, in the, they're here because the post off in the postseason, the Baltimore Raven defense has created eight turnovers. You cannot score on them in the red zone. They have got them in riding this wave of emotion of Ray Lewis. Chuck Pagano knows his defense is a big part of why the Ravens are here today. Well, that story is amazing. I had my mother who battled cancer, and I know the support in that group that, that it took for her to to push through and continue to fight. Um, so I understand that struggle. Um, the guys rallied around them and played. Talking to Reggie Wayne and Andrew Luck, they talked about how that thing could have frayed uh, at the Pro Bowl when I spoke to them. But they held it together and they were able to fight through and make the playoffs for them. And you know, you talk about, Coach, uh, the Baltimore defense, and yes, they had an incredible run. Ray Lewis coming back, announcing his retirement. They beat Andrew Luck, Manning, Tom Brown.